This is a HeadGum Podcast. Monday, November 2nd-ish. And <laughs> that little research we did to get to this point. Uh, and this episode is brought to you by MeUndies.com. No, me other. MeUndies.com. If you want to look good and feel good, we recommend MeUndies.com. Wearing them right now. Wearing them always. The, but it's more than just underwear. It's more than just clothing. It's more than just an ad. All right, people? We, we, we ring, we, we yell, we praise, we, we constantly talk about MeUndies.com. Yes, they do pay us to do so. But sure. in addition to that, we just actually love the product. Right. Uh, how can you guys help? How can you guys at least uh, try to you know support the show? Well, we'll tell you how. If you go to meundies.com slash Amir or meundies.com slash Jake, take a look at what they got. I have a feeling there'll be something for everybody. Dude, I'm telling you, MeUndies is so good. I like word of mouth sell them. Just like when I'm around, you know, like underwear comes up i show people my underwear i'm like this is the best underwear you could possibly own uh and they're constantly updating their site uh they have a french terry collection so the terry shorts that i have the sweatshirts that i have also comes in full-length pants and Those there's there's hoodies point. and there's shirts and then there's the design of the month and it changes every month and every month it's great the zombie ones for halloween were amazing and then there's one called pebble now it's just stylish as the shit. The white T's, the white V's are on point, and I would say that they're on fleek as well. The T's and the V's uh, are oh, should be your stees. And uh, if Not you bad. are if you're around your computer, check out me undies <laughs> uh, for free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. So you said ping like it rhymed with everything else, but yeah, it, it was, that one was a slant rhyme more than anything. Slant rhyme um, still rhymes a little bit. Yeah, so I'll say like T's, P's, and ping. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's it's, <laughs> it's a, a stretch. At a it's a harsh thing. slant. It's a very severe slant. It's deep. It is almost a wall. Uh, and if you go to, like we said before, meundies.com slash Jake or meundies.com slash Amir, you'll get 20% off that first order. So 20% off. And then in addition to that, free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Check them out. At the very least, photos of attractive people on a website. Yeah. Can't go wrong there. Uh, so that's meundies.com. One of our longest, one of our best, one of our faves... MeUndies.com. Uh, this episode was recorded in two chunks, one before, one after Halloween. Uh, things did get real. Let's get straight into it. Boom, baby. They say that laughter is the best medication. So if you find yourself in a sticky situation, email these two Jews. And if I were you, cause they can give you some good advice. Though I can guarantee it'll always be nice But at least it will be funny And it doesn't cost you money So if you want to learn how to get babes Or maybe just how to finally get laid Or how to put it in her ass Wait, Mama turned down the podcast It's hosted by Amir, who's good at math And Jake, who's a bit of a sociopath But trust me, they're the bomb if I were your show at gmail.com. Ha. 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 I like when girls do it. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It's, they're taking it from us. <laughs> oh, come That's on. That's our word for them. <laughs> what? I make that noise about them, and they stole it from me. Not necess- it's my noise. <laughs> I stole it from Kanye. <laughs> Fair and square. <laughs> I stole it first. Uh, that was from Nikki Richards. That was a Jason Mraz cover, correct? Yeah. Those are the lyrics, too. Divine intervention. We should get Jason Mraz on the podcast. I was actually thinking we should get Mraz on the show. Yeah. So it's funny that you say that. I, it would just be <laughs> I was me, just you, like, and Mraz. Yeah, so I was thinking that, like, me, you... Cause, I, it's so funny that you mentioned that because, like, earlier today, I was talking to Douglas, my uh, <laughs> my autistic nephew, and he really? was just like, yeah, he was like, what are you up to? And I was like, I think we should try to get Mraz on the show. You told that to Douglas? Yeah, I said that to Douglas. And what did he say back? <laughs> D- I don't know. I wasn't, I was, he, he was, uh, he was on mute. Okay. So I was just, I was just ranting and raving. It was like a what note do you to mean? self. A phone call? Yeah, I called him and he put the button on mute. And I was like, Douglas, are you there? And I couldn't hear anything. I was like. <laughs> 
And then you said, what? We should get Mraz on the podcast. Interesting. And then and you said was, it. Yeah. And so it just, yeah, it's like crazy you said, it would be me, But you. also crazy is, I guess what you... <laughs> Your interaction with, <laughs> with your cousin Douglas. Yeah, <laughs> Douglas. <laughs> is strange. Uh, so yeah, it would be me, you, Mraz, and then... Well, you have a mutual friend. I mean, I just imagine he knows Gautier, and you yeah. went to, yes, I went you went to, to Jewish, Jewish elementary camp. school and summer oh, camp with, with Gautier. Gautier. Yeah. <laughs> we actually had, we took uh, an art chug. Chug is like what we call activities in oh. Jewish summer camp. And how did Gautier, Gautier enjoy would, the art chug? Chug, yeah. yeah. He was fine. Gautier was in the chug and like it was me, it was my buddy Rami, Jesse, Ofer, mm. and then mm. Gautier. And now you're like, just somebody, somebody that, that I used to know. know. Yeah. yeah. So he would, he would sing that while right. he was doing Even art. Even then? Yeah, he was doing it that. Was, I guess it was it's a melody that was always in his head. <laughs> yeah. Somebody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, wow. So we were like, like gluing elbow macaroni on construction paper. Fucking wild. And I was like, Gautier. Wow. Or we didn't even call him Gautier back then. Right. We called that him. Was, yeah. That what's was, his real name? His name is Shlomo. Shlomo? Yeah, Shlomo Macaulay. Wow. Cool. So, and then I he goes it. by Gautier now, and he does know Mraz. And we should Yeah, get if we get both of them on. Gautier and Mraz. Yeah, and then me and you would be the two. Yeah. Like, I yeah. honestly wouldn't even care if you were here or not. If it was just you, Mraz, and Gautier. Yeah, and even if Mraz wasn't here, if it was just me and, and Gautier. Gautier. And, and actually, could... <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I don't even need to be here. <laughs> what and are you then it describing? Would just Gautier. I hosting think, our show? Yeah, like a spinoff episode that becomes the a new different podcast. podcast. Not even. Oh, on this podcast? We retire. Gautier is the new host. So we do one episode, me, you, Mraz, Gautier. And then we each drop off one by one. So the second just... episode is me, you, Gautier. No. Or me, second... you, Mraz, Gautier. Why do you think you are around? I didn't. The second, the second, second... option I gave you was you, Mraz, Gautier. Huh? I didn't even <laughs> want to be there. And then what? <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> and then what? And then it's Mraz and Gautier. <laughs> and then, and then the fourth and final Gautier. episode, the transition is complete. The podcast Gautier. is then hosted by Gautier. That was written by Nikki Richards. I really liked it. Yeah, I liked the parody. What was that even a parody of? Wasn't it a Jason Mraz song? We yeah. should have Mraz on the show. I was saying that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah to who? It doesn't matter. That's <laughs> awesome. Let's yeah. Let's start the show. Okay. Um 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 uh uh uh, uh um this is Oh, we a already very said. spooky episode. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. After Halloween. <laughs> We're recording this on Halloween Eve. All Eve. Hallows Eve. All Hallows Eve. No, October... that's, it is Hallows Eve. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not it's Eve, October 31st. Eve. Yeah. You had the bright idea, first time in a while, to Thank record you. half the episode before Halloween. Yeah. So right now, the palpable excitement and energy you're hearing is because we're ready. We're almost ready to go out for yeah. Halloween. We are going to party. We're going to rage. We're going to... You love Halloween. I do. I have never, ever uh, in, I think, 10 years had a Halloween where I didn't have sex. Wow. So I'm pretty excited about <laughs> 10 it. for 10. Yeah. I love that. Pretty cool. That's a good streak. It's a decent record. I <laughs> yeah. will admit. How many of them was just you masturbating in a phone booth? Though? All of them. Okay. So, uh, oh, so not, right. So I've never had are, sex on Halloween, but I always, always come. come. <laughs> <laughs> and then just to finish your idea, we'll do the first half of the episode tonight, go yeah. to break. When we come back, it'll be after Halloween. Right. Uh, so our break will be like nine hours of oh, uh, yeah. getting shit faced yeah. and dancing. And then we'll do the second half Sunday, November first, release the episode Monday, November second. Right. And who knows what the what's gonna happen. On part two of this podcast, we are going definitely gonna, gonna be hung over. We're gonna sound different. Yeah. I'm gonna sound sick again. I'm gonna be like I'm so excited and happy right now. I yeah. wonder if I'll be sad and miserable afterwards. Probably. Yeah, you'll feel nauseous and like dehydrated. Yeah, and I'll have made a lot of bad mistakes. And yeah, I'll regret everything. And yeah, I'll hate yeah, yeah. Myself. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, and then we could talk about that. Right. Uh, but for now, let's talk about uh, these people. Uh, this is what is this show? This is if I were you, the only advice podcast on the internet, hosted by me and, and Jason Mraz <laughs> and Gautier. <laughs> Uh, we get emails from people who are in difficult places seeking our guidance. Um, that email address, if you have your own questions, is if I were you show at gmail.com. I found a good one to start us off. All right. We can get into it. Let's get right into it. Uh, we need a guy's name. We're going to give this email, real email from real people, fake name, to preserve their anonymity. Do Let's you have... 
What about your costume? Yeah, I was going to say your costume. Oh, that's a good one. Your costume is Mario. Did I tell you my joke for my costume? Uh, I guess anytime you meet somebody, you say, you say, oh, what's your name? And they'll be like, oh, I'm Allison. What's your name? And you say, it's a me. No, no, no. Oh, Amirio. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's Amir. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll be like, oh, they won't know that I said that. It's, it's Amir. Yeah. Mario. It's Amir. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> they'll just think you did a bad Mario yeah. impression. Yeah. <laughs> they'll think that my Italian It's a Me has an R at the end right. of it for some reason. Uh, you didn't want to dress up as Luigi. N- well, it's I just it's just that I have a thing that I do. Which know? is what? I dress up as a cat every year. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I've been a black cat. This will be the seventh year in a row, I believe, unless it's six. I, I don't know if I'm giving myself too much credit. I think, But I think I'm 30 now. It's either six or seven. And you want to do it nine years, or is that just the thing that I made up? I, no, I want to do it nine years and then retire it. Yeah, and then you could do Luigi, right? Because you had I, a mustache. You, you a Mario and Luigi costume for us would be perfect. Yeah, the mustache. I but I shaved my mustache now. I just wish I, wish I was a little shorter and fatter. Me too, all yep. the time. Yeah. So Mario writes. I found myself in a bit of a strange streak. I'm 24 years old, and I say I'd go out often and occasionally meet girls. The last four girls I've met, three of them drunkenly at bars and one of them from Tinder, all had a similar quality. I totally hit it off with them at the bar or club. They've asked me to go back to their place. We start making out, and they stop me and say, You're going to hate me, but I'm a virgin, and I'm not going to sleep with you tonight. Don't get me wrong, everyone's free to do what they want, and I'm not passing judgment, but why invite me back to your place if you're not going to fuck? And secondly, what vibe am I giving off to meet girls who want to take me home but don't plan on sleeping with me? Sincerely, Mario. All right, interesting. Mario wants to be a pimp daddy. Mario wants to fuck. Yeah. Mario wanna fuck. Fuck. So I guess the vibe that he's giving off is that he's a nice guy. Unfortunately, that's not necessarily true. He's, he's not a... attracting the ladies that don't care to make you work for it a little bit. Right. He, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not attracting people that are looking for one-night stands, which I guess he wants. But he's, but he's acting he's... like the M.O. is a pure defeat. I'd say like M.O. is like, in the grand scheme of things... 85% of the way there to having sex. Yeah, I mean, like, it's very, it's not uh, that common to make out and be invited back to someone's house. It yeah. means they like you. It means they think you're cool. It means they think you're nice. More and, importantly, they trust you enough to let you into their house. Yeah. And then he's sort of, be, I think he's, I mean, I, I understand that he, uh, you know, he issued some caveats and he's saying, like, I'm not trying to pass judgment, but like, yeah, he's being a little bit of an asshole that he's like, the be all end all is us fucking and like, what the hell's wrong with you if we're not fucking? Yeah. And then it's like, he's not even willing to give it a second shot. Yeah. You, it doesn't, have this isn't to even be, a date yet. Right. It doesn't, ha- I don't know what the thing is of like being one and done. Like it, I gotta go first night. I want to yeah. fuck. <laughs> like two nights. It's, <laughs> it's it, very minimal effort for sex. Right. And like the timeline of your life, if you spend two or three nights with somebody and you're a good person and you have sex that's pretty you know that's a great ratio that's a great percentage that's a good conversion rate that's a great conversion rate that's exactly right it's like someone bringing you back to their place he's acting like he's looking for ten thousand dollars someone's bringing them back to their place and giving them like 43 cents by the way like one night stands are not that great so you're saying emming emming o is almost like not as good as sex but like pretty darn close enough yeah it's i mean the it's the build-up it's great i i i think i've definitely had better sex with people that i knew at least slightly more than than people that i didn't know at all wait say that again i've had better sex with people that i knew a little bit oh right than than complete strangers at a bar yeah there's, (laughs) there's something fun about that too but right but it's not a complete loss. It's funny. He right. his <laughs> the email subject that I just read is zero for four. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even like it's not. It's a loss with that attitude. <laughs> even if you're fucking, you are a zero. <laughs> I met a girl, invited me back, made out, and you know what? This is a. It's interesting that they all say I'm. You're gonna hate me. That's what girls have to say. Yeah, that's not true. That oh, should you're gonna not be the language. Me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Yeah. I'm not gonna fuck you. I'm a villain because I'm not gonna <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, and you don't have. To, and I'm girls hateable. don't have to apologize. Of it's not. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna. I, I'm gonna hate you. You're not gonna hate me. You can just say I'm not gonna sleep with you. 
Right. And, um, and, and hey, and if you make a big deal, I'll hate you. Yeah. How's that? And you, when somebody says that to you, the goal is to be like, what are you even talking about? Zero expectations. I don't even know why this came up. Yeah, don't worry about, about it. about is kissing. Yeah. Like, you're going to hate me, but I don't want to fuck you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you! So what am I doing here? You idiot! <laughs> why am I in the house? <laughs> If my dick's not going to go into you. You think I want to waste time licking your tongue? I could have done that at the bar. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> and then there's oftentimes uh, an excuse, sometimes fraudulent. Hmm. They'll say, I'm a virgin. They'll say, I'm on my period. Uh, because a lot of times females feel bad for saying, you I just straight up sense. don't want to have sex with you. Yeah. They which think is that's pretty, like, I think that's pretty normal just to be like, hey. I don't want your dick penetrating me tonight. Yeah, that's that's hmm. the thing. Like a guy just has to stick his dick in a hole. That's easy. You'll do that anyway. Bloop. A girl has to be like, I have to trust you enough so much that you will go inside of me. Yeah, come inside of me. Well, or in a condom, of course. Yeah, yeah. Let's safe here. <laughs> but you have to be very. You have to trust a guy to do that. And like the fact that you can't develop that kind of trust in three drunken hours is pretty. Yeah, logical fair. or practical it's, it's fair. fair but like at the same time you'll never hear a guy being like listen lady i know you want to fuck me it's not gonna happen yeah tonight. that's a much more rare occurrence but here's the other issue that i see with mario he's being it's a little bit of a wario oh really <laughs> i mean let me tell you about this he's a little bit of a wario in that <laughs> he is if he's like thinking about oh for four and like how upset he is that he's not fucking when he's meeting these girls like He's not thinking about having a fun time with the night. Yeah. You got to be, you have to, the enjoy sex the has journey. to be like, not even on your horizon. It's got, you have to like, you're a ship on the ocean and there might be land in the front of you, but like, just enjoy the waves and the sunset on the, on the water. You enjoy the I mean? journey, not just the destination. Yeah. Like, let's just have fun with your boys, have fun with your girls, get to know somebody. If we have sex, like that, sex is going to be a byproduct of being a, a chill ass dude, yeah. right? Not being like, and of sometimes guys that are really, really thirsty will get laid. And I think that creates sort of a false perception of like, if, if I fucking am if determined, I, if I want it enough, happen. if my heart is like, true, then, if that, when you do have sex, your attitude can't even be that good towards like he walks out <laughs> and he like, pumps his fist. Like, yes. <laughs> but the record's still one for five. So he's like, <laughs> I'm still losing. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're if you keeping score, then odds are it's not in your favor. Yeah. It seems like, and this attitude only comes, like, all I see is, like, three other dudes calling him the day after. We're like, how'd it go? Like, well, we made out. Oh, pussy. pussy. You didn't even fuck her. Meanwhile, those three dudes went home by themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what did you guys do? We went to the diner, bitch. <laughs> we only made out. Um, so what vibe am I giving off to meet girls? I feel like I have a similar vibe, which is kind of like the nerdy friendly look. I'm not attracting, uh, super party ladies. Yeah. And that's uh, okay. I think he has to embrace that, that he's honestly, that he's attracting, that he's attracting people that are like, you know, kind of, kind of wholesome Yeah, that, that don't necessarily want to, want to bone on night numero uno. Right. And and like own that and just be like hey yeah i'm like i i take it slow too let's like let's go out again let's go out one or two more times and then you and then you'll have sex yeah you will have sex and then everybody have, wants to have sex it's gonna happen the, you just have to develop a trust yeah you gotta be chill about it uh and then when it happens don't upgrade your scoreboard yeah yeah then it's not let's, one let's, for let's four, retire dude. while you're behind <laughs> quit while you're behind uh, but weren't you like that as an earlier dude? Like, is, um, isn't that maybe a phase you grow out of? Maybe, but I, I like numbers and like, I did. Keeping yeah. Score there was a time like, I cared about numbers, but I never ever cared about like not having sex. Like if somebody's like, I don't want to fuck you. I would be like, yeah, of course not. I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> look at me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's what you say. I'm surprised you even let me. This right. far. No, I'm like definitely dirty. <laughs> so great idea. Good call. Like if somebody said they didn't want to fuck me, I was like, Hell yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You're, you're right. smart. You did. You're, you're done good, kid. <laughs> Should I go home or do you want to just chill? What up? And, and then, then, but like, I did, when I did have sex, I think I would like definitely catalog it and be like, there we go. Hey, um, my confidence was boosted. Right. 
but how often would you see that person again versus someone who's like, we're only going to make out? I think it was like 50% of the time. Right. Like if I had sex with somebody on the first time, I most, I don't know. I don't know how many repeats I've had. We got to go back to your catalog. Let me open up the Google Doc. Yeah. Well, it's a shared doc. Yeah. I actually posted it on the Reddit. It's, <laughs> it's a Google public. Drive. <laughs> it's a public shared. Are y'all on Quip? Well, let me add you to this Quip. <laughs> Who here is on Slack? Um, all right. Were you like that, though? Uh, no, because when I was in my 20s and stuff, I was in relationships. I didn't have numbers. I had just, I had love, I guess. Well, not really, because love lasts then. Oh, so like if you break up with someone, then you're not, you were never in love. (laughs) Then the relationship (laughs) didn't matter and you learned nothing. (laughs) So like at the end of any relationship that doesn't end in both of you on your deathbeds, that was not, (laughs) that's what I consider a zero. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's not the making out, it's not the sex, it's did I go the distance, quote unquote, and that distance. kids. Yeah. Die together, (laughs) holding each other as the Titanic sinks. Yes, you are the old couple on the bed. Then I'm over everything. Yeah, yeah, we all are. <laughs> That's beautiful. Only they had it. <laughs> Jack and Rose. Uh, all right. Let's, I guess, yeah, we're at the 20-ish minute mark. I guess so we should stop right now. We're gonna t- I, I don't think we should do this because we have people coming over, but uh-huh. it'd be funny to get drunk, get in our costumes, and come in and do one, <laughs> one question before we go out. All right. Well, we'll consider that. We don't know if that's That's probably happen. not going to happen. Okay. So either that or we're going to take a break right now. We're definitely taking a break. Yeah, that's happening. And we'll be back on the other side. Will it be tomorrow? Will it be later? Will we be drunk? Will we be hungover? Only time will tell. Wow, I really wonder what's going to happen. I feel. Do you feel good about this night? Like, yeah. Do you feel positive? Like this. I'm is excited be... that my costume is comfortable. Yeah, that's always uh, good. Like one time, I dressed as a Rubik's cube and I couldn't even walk. Yeah, that's no fun. Yeah, I'm dressed. I'm. That's uh, the best part about the cat. Oh yeah, sexy cat tonight though. Which is what I wore. I'm wearing a tank top instead of a, a t-shirt like I have all the other years. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, two years ago, I maybe I wore a jumpsuit. Jumpsuit, jumpsuit, I won't need a bada bada. <laughs> yeah, Drizzy. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, BRB. Peace. Thank you as well to NatureBox.com for sponsoring this episode. Nature, Delicious. NatureBox. Um, that is when they deliver snacks to your door so you don't have to go to the grocery store anymore. Can I explain it any more clearly, Ever fucker? heard of it? Um, NatureBox uh, sends us snacks in the mail. It's a fun little surprise, a fun little bonus uh, to receive these delicious snacks because you sort of forget about it, and then when it arrives, it's like a gift to yourself. Yeah. Um, and when you eat it, it's a gift to your mouth, and then it's a gift to your stomach. We're talking about Big Island Pineapple. We're talking about Sweet Blueberry Almonds, Harvest Nuts, Nut Mix, Sriracha Roasted Cashews. They've got popcorn. they got salty. they got sweet. It's all good because it's all snacks. And it's Nature Box, and it's delivered to your. It's delivered right to your door, so you don't have to d- deal with uh, actually going anywhere to get it. Yeah, pretty perfect. Um, the prices are low, the snacks are affordable, and they are very good. And if you go to naturebox.com slash if I were you and order Nature Box, um, forward us that receipt so we can personally thank you next time we endorse Nature Box. For example, the last time we gave out this offer, the following people forwarded us their receipt. So thank you to Tolkien T, John Earl D, Craig and O, Max G, Elena R, and Daniel T. Thank you very much to all of y'all. Uh, some people are still discovering the joy of Nature Box. Good gift for the holiday season if you're interested in getting your loved one uh, the gift of snacks delivered to their door. Once again, it's naturebox.com slash if I were you. Forward us that receipt so we can personally thank you. Yeah. Check them out. I have a feeling if you uh, see, uh, look at their website, you're going to find something that you are at the very least curious to try. We highly recommend it. Personally, I think it's actually pretty darn good. I'm often chewing on their snacks myself. So, so be like Jake and chew on their snacks. Um, naturebox.com slash if I were you. Let's get back to the show. Hey, we're back. Oh, oh. fuck me. <laughs> Stop yelling. Dude. <laughs> oh, turn off the lights. It's 7 a.m. Why did we decide to record now? <laughs> it's so bright in here. 
it is the next day. It Halloween is November is 1st. Over. We've conquered it. Rabbit, rabbit, my friend. We, <laughs> we, I think we won. Yeah. My Mario costume was, I was the belle of the ball. I think you were a belle. Uh, I, I think my, my gay ballerina cap yeah. was, <laughs> uh, was also a hit. For pictures, you can see my Instagram. I have photos of me. I have photos of Jake. Mm-hmm. Um, we sna- Oh, we're Snapchatting, too. It's on our Snapchat. Did you snap it? Yeah, I snapped a little bit. Amir Bloom. Or uh, Jake sna- Demand 85. Sure. I didn't snap it, but follow my shit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you could snap right now. That's a nice idea. Why don't you take a video of me talking while I tell you guys a funny joke I said at Halloween once? Okay. So I'm Hold walking on, around. Not, there's no video yet. All right, right, it's ready? okay. Okay, ready? Oh, yeah, sorry. You can yeah, just yeah. tell the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be like candid. I get it. Okay. okay. Ready? Yeah. Yep. So it's like uh, I walked into this place. We went to like a 90s dance party, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm wearing... Uh, overalls and a red shirt and a Mario hat. Yeah. Some guy goes, Mario. I'm like, oh, thank God you know who I am. I was afraid nobody would know. <laughs> <laughs> like it was a subtle costume, my giant red hat. Totally. He's like, of course, Fuck. Mario, right? I was like, yeah, yes. Oh, thank God. How did you, first of all, how was it for you? I had. Because I saw you having a sour time for an hour and a half in the bathroom. I was. I got there sober as the night. Yeah, bone sober, they call it. And and then, yeah, I I was trying to get everyone else to sober up by sort of (laughs) intercepting drinks. Yeah, you would knock drinks out of my hand. Yeah. Are you going to Uber home? I had a New York Times there with sort of like there was news of a of a Russian uh, jetliner that crashed in in Egypt, killing everyone on board. Yeah. So I was trying to somber things oh. a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, just sort of saying like you guys are partying here in Los Angeles yeah, while the, the rest of the world burns. Right. The DJ recognized us and he's like Jake and Amir in the house, and then you were like, Yeah, can I actually I said, get on yeah, the mic for a second? I need, yeah. Do you guys mind if I talk? And then you said, Why? Are you, how, what's the celebration here? Yeah, I said you guys are all nero for this <laughs> what is that he's the i think the, the, isn't that like greek emperor the roman emperor that played his fiddle while the city burned oh i see so that's what we were to you yeah but overall you had a good time i had a great time <laughs> how do you feel today uh, i feel well i mean i guess it's 5 30 p.m now yeah. so i feel good i felt i was pretty hung over this morning what is a hangover like for you um because I, I feel like it's a little bit different for everybody mine is very consistent within myself what, oh, oh! You like all of your hangovers are the same. All of my hangovers are exactly the same. You have a stomach thing. Your stomach hurts. Doesn't no, it? it's not a stomach. Oh. It's pure headache. Like yeah. I feel so headachey and dry and like dehydrated. Right, and, and I like no sudden movements. I th- you think that's unique to you though? Yeah, that's because, how everyone's hangovers are. But mine is it starts with a headache in the morning and gets gradually better throughout the day and then like one day, one moment in the day, it always just disappears for me like at the, around 3 to 4 p.m. and that yeah. that it going away feeling is amazing. Yeah, there's nothing better than it just clearing up. Yeah. Like, like the that's storm the, clouds. Even really better cool. than being drunk is not being hung over anymore. Oh, there's always a moment too when I'm drinking and I'm like, "Oh, I'm going to be hung over." Where it's yeah. like 2 a.m. and I'm I'm like very drunk and I'm like I know I'm gonna go to sleep within an hour or two. Yeah, why do you drink? Why do people drink when they're? That's the worst idea. Is drinking when you're drunk? You're already drunk. Well, that's when you're making these dumb decisions. Right. I'm gonna get a shot for every. Yeah. Like Like, the the amount of alcohol that hasn't even reached my blood yet is like pretty great, and now I'm just adding more. Yeah. It's like if there was a switch that you could. Yeah. I used to set an alarm on my phone when I was going out that would go off at 1:30 a.m. and then just just said water. water. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, all right. Because like you. I know what I don't know. You just like you don't really think of it, but I, you know that's a good move. And then when you see it, you're like, "Good job, yeah." Past self. And you're still going to be drunk. You think when you're drunk, if you see water, you're like, "Oh, that's just going to ruin my. Totally. That's going to end my night." And water is so good. Like every time you'll see some, you know, like somebody else so hungover, and they're like, "How are you not this hungover? You drank as much as me." Yeah. I oh actually I started <laughs> drinking water. I switched to water. Huh. This, is a, this is a commercial for water. Yeah. I actually invested in this new miracle pill. It's called That's, water. I switched to water should be the, uh, uh, the slogan for this new water. Uh, what are your hangovers? Uh, I guess they're pretty similar to yours. It feels, I mean, just like feel very dehydrated, feel a headache, intense headache, and I'm really, really fuzzy. Oh. Very fuzzy and slow. Can you eat? No, I want coffee, and that's about it. Yeah, and then it like, and then it like, 
two or three when it's disappearing, that's when I become ravenous. Yeah, that's like, when you just need salt bread. Yeah, just salt all bread. you want on salt is, bread, cheese, eggs. Yeah, oh. <laughs> some salt cheese we bread eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Still, just like talking about these eggs. breakfast uh, tacos. But yeah, it, it felt like it wasn't like it was not the most epic night ever, but not a terrible night. Yeah. It's it like was, a really solid Halloween. It was a solid dance party Halloween. Yeah. That was actually, it was, I think it was a really great night. Yeah. It was a great night. It is funny. Like just people like that same exact night with nobody dressed up is not as fun. Yeah. It's just like, this is more, f- I'm always dancing, but because I'm wearing a Mario costume, it should, it's more fun. Shouldn't it be like every weekend should be Halloween? I guess that's like part of the fun of just like dressing up before you go out in general. Right. But it's like, yeah, like what if I just wore my Mario costume on like <laughs> February 9th? That'd be great. Yeah, to a deli for lunch. <laughs> Specifically an Italian deli. I just want to go alone to an Italian restaurant dressed as Mario, eat a lasagna by myself. You wouldn't be able to. Like, you walk you by, you start you throwing You wouldn't be able to do it by yourself. Me. People would, oh, that's a fun idea. Yeah, like a, what's, what's a, a flash mob type deal. Yeah, totally. Some kind of like weird prank, like a hidden camera show. Yeah, so you'll throw turtle shells at me and then maybe and like then banana jump, peels. you jump on me. Yeah. Oh, you'll be Yoshi. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was imagining being a Koopa Troopa. You, <laughs> I see. I was trying to kill you. Kill me, yeah. Got it. Well, I could be Yoshi, too. Um, and now that you're no longer hungover, can you imagine drinking? Mm. If necessary, could you get drunk tonight? I guess if necessary, I could get drunk. I would have a beer. I was, I might have a beer tonight. This is what it feels like when we do like three shows in four nights. Yeah. Like this is the second night type vibe where like we could rally. Right. And if we, we got a do. yeah, if we got a drink in us and then it's like, okay, maybe we can have a little bit more. Yeah, really all I need to be prescribed is like what a whiskey and a Drake song. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back to back. Speaking of shows, you know we have three shows coming up in November. Yeah. And it is November. Yeah. Holy shit. The we, shows are in like two weeks. Less than that. Less than. November 10th, we're at Muhlenberg College. November 11th, we're in Philadelphia at the Helium Comedy Club. We just found out that 18, 19, 20-year-olds can come. Yeah, if that's they big bring, news. If they bring someone that's 25 and older. And a 25 or older person can bring up to five people, I think they said. So I feel like between the people that have already bought, because we've sold like... 75% of the tickets already. And yeah. we guaranteed those people are 21 and over. Right. So if you buy tickets and you're 18 to 21, you odds are like you can find somebody. someone yeah. in like, line hey, and be like, take me in. Well, you didn't you ever do that for rated R movies? We're like, hey, can I just walk in with you? Because oh. like, you have to be like accompanied by a 17 year old. Right. Totally, over. you could do that. And if like you have an older brother or a parent that can just like walk in with you, then leave too. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, at this point, I would say like, this is an 18 and over yeah. show. I mean, just find a 25-year-old to bring you in. That's not that hard. Come that's going to be a good show. That's going to be our first live podcast in Philly. And what else is going to be an insane show is this Brooklyn show the next night, which oh. is already sold out. Dude, Weeks so ahead excited. of time. So excited. That's, Homecoming. And that's not even including the list of 30 people we have to bring. Oh, I know. Got to get those those Rosenberg boys in. Oh, Mikey K. Fun. Yeah. Big Bear. <laughs> Baby Bear. Baby Bear. Fuck. It's your boy. I was going to mention that just their podcast because I was listening to it the other... I was listening to it yesterday or two days ago when I was driving to Santa Barbara. Twinovation. Twinovation. It's so funny. They are... Like, they're reaching a rhythm. They're getting into a rhythm. They Their show's got better structure than... I mean, we're on a fucking tangent. We haven't yeah. answered the question yet. <laughs> right. Their show is structured. It's funny. Dave is... I He's... He's, he's he's having delusions of grandeur. Oh yeah, he's like he, we thought he was confident before he even had a podcast, and now that he has a somewhat successful one, Carnell can't quite even rein him in anymore. No, Dave's Dave's head is in the clouds. It's amazing. Uh, if you've listened to the show, you know what you're talking about. And if not, uh, check out. I think uh, the last three episodes is a good way to like catch up on everything you need to know. Yeah, it's Dave, Jeff, uh, and Mike uh, Carnell, all childhood friends of each other, and Jake's. Um, and the premise of the show is coming up with schemes, dreams, hustles, and business ideas. <laughs> uh, some of them are not even business ideas. Some of them are creatures. I mean, I don't want to spoil it too yeah, much. Don't, don't spoil the no episode. 
<laughs> yes, I am. No or no, I am you know, out. My favorite thing is just when Dave says, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Just okay. reading the pitch off his iPhone. That's right, folks. <laughs> He's a snake oil salesman. He truly is. Although that's giving him too much credit because snake oil would be the greatest idea he, he's ever <laughs> yeah. thought of. Uh, I, we should go on their show when we're in New York. Yeah. Oh, this is... I'll pitch this idea to you I have right now live. Okay. Um, rather than like... Well, we'll go on their show and uh -huh. then we release it as an episode of our podcast. Almost like a spinoff thing. Whoa. So it's like episode... That episode on the, on Monday, whatever... We we do like a two minute intro, yeah, and then we say this. The following is not an episode of <laughs> If I Were You. It's an episode of Twin Evasion. It's sort of like wow, that's major real cross promotion. That's very that's in depth cross promotion. Yeah, it's, it's forcing insane. people who didn't actually know about their show to listen to it. Exactly. We really all right. I have to think on that. Yeah, <laughs> the, that's fair. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good idea, <laughs> which is why it's perfect for the show. I have a great idea for a twin ovation up. Uh, oh, when you get the on there, yeah, I yeah. have. I've got two. I'm yeah. trying to decide which one. Actually, I have two ideas and one and one scheme. Oh, so uh, but I, I I don't think I can pitch all three. Uh, real quickly, we also have shows in December in the Northwest. So if you're in San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, or Vancouver, tickets are for sale. All the ticket links are at ifireshow dot com. Come check us out. Uh, we were talking about podcasts. Uh, I just wanted to mention that we have a bunch of new shows on the HeadGum Network. Truth. Uh, we have a fantasy basketball podcast now. Yeah. Oh, shit. I should you're, look at my fantasy yeah, basketball team. You're in it. Yeah, dude. You're, you're doing a fantasy sport for the first time ever. I, my trade's about to go through. Commissioner Tim Baltz, UTK, who was on our episode uh, a couple weeks ago, is in it. Jake is in it. Rick Fox, Kristen, Kristen Ledlow, Ledlow, and a bunch of other funny comedians and friends of the family. Uh, so if you're at all interested in the NBA... Fuck, I'm going to uh, lose my matchup this week, dude. It's going to be a fun listen. What are you, what are you losing right now? What's I'm the losing, score? It's 3-6. Uh -huh. um, I'm winning in... All right. This is it. You've become this Free kind throw of guy. percentage. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm gone. Yeah. Three points made. Uh-huh lost sure <laughs> uh points dude fucking destroyed me yeah <laughs> oh, come to think of it i haven't started anybody not, since uh, tuesday the only thing i'm beating him on are assists yeah blocks and field goal percentage well you shouldn't have had the draft strategy of drafting only white people from yukon <laughs> you only drafted white basketball players from not yukon true darone sheffers in your fantasy jake team. Voschkel and yeah. Daron... <laughs> uh all right we should answer some questions fair enough uh oh, myers leonard is the fucking problem you yeah you drafted myers legend and he's he's been anything but since since you picked him up little bitch, uh why don't we give this guy um an australian dude uh a name a fake name do you want to do halloween theme or you want to do maybe australian basketball player did you pick up della vadova on your team i did not Delhi, I don't think he's actually any good. Well, he's playing all right now because friggin' your boy Kyrie Irving is hurt. All right. Well, we'll see. Delhi writes, I'm a 19-year-old male from Melbourne, and last night I went to the strip club as a lone wolf for the first time after a long, tiresome day. I ended up talking to this 25-year-old smoke show for a couple hours, and our conversations would revolve around things like life goals, dating lives, issues with our current generation, etc., and everything was going quite swimmingly. Afterwards, it got pretty late, and I told her I had to leave soon as I had a uni exam the next day. She then told me that she enjoyed our conversation and was intrigued by my modesty and friendly personality since apparently her typical customers can't hold up a proper conversation and simply just want a lap dance anyway. I felt like it would be rude if I left without getting a lap dance from her since strippers there have to pay for their work rather than being given an actual wage. So I ended up getting a private lap dance. However, at the end, when I was about to the leave... noble gentleman. <laughs> when I was about to leave, she told me to add her on Facebook and told me her full name. I added her later that night, and today she accepted my friend request, but neither of us has initiated a conversation yet. Now my question is, what do you think her intentions are? Is it just a business? 
business thing and she wants another dude to be a loyal customer of hers? Or does she actually have pure interest in me? Should I message her on Facebook first? She did mention at one stage that she would date a 19-year-old, but so I'm not exactly sure what that was implying, hence why I'm writing you this email. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing your sound advice. Kind regards, Matthew Delavadova. Okay, Deli. Mm, dude went to a strip club. I feel like this is like a weird thing that I, almost all guys have, which is like this desire to date a stripper but then like when you actually come close you're like such heavy skepticism about it right and, like such reservation but you still like go you dive head first into trying yeah you might as well try like the the breakthrough connection conversation that happens at a strip club uh-huh. i think happens all the time right and you always are like Oh, I'm like not like the other guys. No. I don't come to strip clubs. I'm yeah. just here right now. And then you always have the hope. You're like, I know she's paid to flirt, but I feel like she's actually into me. Yeah. Is that possible? Like, I know. Yeah, they're all flirty with everyone, but I'm not like a gross weirdo. I'm right. like a normal dude. Who came to the strip club by myself. <laughs> Uh, but there is a chance she did give him her, give him her full name. I think that's the rate. They did hope, add. Right? Uh, they did add, tell her to add him on Facebook. Yeah, and she accepted the friend request. Yeah, I think that like this stripper probably avoids real life connections with people that she gives lap dances to. Right, like it would be, would be one thing if she had like a Facebook fan page or a Twitter or something. I don't know. But, right. Like, I imagine that strippers would have to go the lengths sometimes, hence having fake names, right? To like to not avoid make yeah like a real that, life connection exactly because guys can be weird, right? So, well, does it really like do strippers have like is it when you get a haircut at a salon and somebody gives you their card and like you know we can do this outside the business hours I can just come over and give yeah. you your haircut? Do strippers do that? Is that like a thing so. where it's like oh now I have your direct line? Well, maybe I don't have to go to the strip club. You can just come over, give me a lap dance, and leave. Well, I think there's like a that exists where it's like oh if you like dancing with me at the strip club, you can pay me to fuck you. You know, but la- like, last week, uh. Uh, I got a massage for the first time. Oh, that's that right. app. Yeah, uh, where you, it's like Uber, where you click a button and someone comes over we and gives you a massage. Ask them if they could, we'll advertise on our podcast. Right, that's because, why I don't want to say their name yet. Yeah. Uh, but it was great. And I'm wondering, could you do that with lap dances? Hey, what's the legality of somebody just coming over you and dancing? I mean, that happens all the time. That's like what bachelor parties are, right? Right. So, like, what's to stop? Like, why have? Is there an illegal thing about having to go to a strip club? Does it have to be zoned for lap dancing? Like, is there a structural integrity that has to be I met? Don't know. You can like, can't you? You can order dancers to come to your house. Can, can you? Well, I thought that's what bachelor parties are. I need like a, I need a seamless web, an E24, a Grubhub, a Chow Now for lap dances. Yeah. Not that I would use it, but I feel like that would be a good thing to have. Like you press a button and then... It's a good idea, but do you want to be the guy that invents it? <laughs> yeah. Because you'd have to like go to VC <laughs> meetings and like... Who's so money are like you? you know when chicks are all up dry and no, I don't like you. You're it. a Tucker Max yeah. of yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it legal? One, two. I feel like people would use it. And three, if I was a millionaire because of it, what would yeah. I tell people? That was. You remember when we hung out with the Bang Bros guys, right? And that was like they those guys like a long time ago had started like a link dump site for porn and they realized like how much more money they could make if they produced it right and they were like in dental school when they were doing it yeah and they were like so it's not illegal no it's just like do we want to be the guys that make a shitload of money off of porn and ultimately they did yes <laughs> <laughs> at least they did it well imagine doing it and not succeeding right like yeah. you paid you paid to make porn and then like nobody watched the porn that you made yeah that happens it's interesting i feel like if you make porn everyone will watch it it's a uh, pretty easy way to get a viral video has there been a this american life about the porn industry because i'm really confused about like i make a porn like how does it not just get lost amongst the infinite free porn like how do i get paid for my porn yeah. Like, do you think, since you're sort of a connoisseur, do you think you could produce a porn that uh, is so premium that people would pay for it? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Rifling through your notebook. I mean, right off the bat, I have, I have this, I, like... Well, I've got the domain, <laughs> fuck me finally, right? <laughs> no, somebody else took that. Well, me and him are going to go... go. What would go your together. niche be? Like, high def, high res... 
60 frames per second. Uh, I mean, I guess like <laughs> definitely. <laughs> there is a difference between premium porn and um free porn, right? Yeah. I mean, but my stuff would it wouldn't be like uh, like a gimmick like that like, oh, I shoot it all like this. I don't know. You know, it, it would just it would be <laughs> subtle little things don't my porn. Don't trivialize it by saying, yeah, I'll porn, shoot it, it on would, a better it, camera. It's not just about the camera. It's part, yeah, I mean, like I would shoot it, it would, no guy noises. That's what. That's <laughs> number one. <laughs> right off the bat, isolated audio tracks. You get to choose. I'm I mean, I'm you telling you, these girls, they'll be, they'd be wearing laughs. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> you know, I can hide them. I can hide them in the cleavage. I can get a boom operator, a fluffer. I just don't want to hear the fucking guy. <laughs> you mean like the guy groaning? Yeah. Oftentimes, like <laughs> when you're watching like POV porn, especially. Uh, say doggy style where somebody's mouth is facing away from the mic and a guy is holding a camera <laughs> and his mouth is really close to the mic. Yeah. You're getting a lot of man noise <laughs> to the point where occasionally somebody <laughs> masturbating to said video may mute the video <laughs> and play another video in the background wow. of a different girl moaning. So yeah. you don't have to deal with the guy noise. A dual sensory triserectomy. It's con- it's the art of convincing yourself you're nutting to the actual audio of the video that you're dealing of with. Of course. And I think there's... I, uh, But I do, it's true. I don't know how you you get people to buy your porn. Yeah, I don't understand how it would work. You'd have to make a lot of but it. But all right? of the porn sites are like owned by three different companies. And do they charge? Yeah, they charge. But also, I read that a lot of these porn sites that charge, like Brazzers or um, Reality Kings, sure. all that stuff, they also own their own tube sites. So they're giving so, it away for free on the side. Yeah, but like they're shorter, shorter videos. Oh. So like a 12 minute video, which, you know, gets most people off. But every once in a while, somebody's like, you know what? I want to see the 40 minute version. Yeah. And then, then they pay for it. And I'm not just, I'm not just about to watch this 12 minute video three times and call it a day. I need to watch 40 minutes of original content. Exactly. So what would you say to this guy who wants to date a huh? stripper? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. I, it sounds like you, you should just message her. Yeah, what's the worst? Why don't you not set an expectations? Why don't you say, I'm going to see where this goes, whether it's a client thing or a business thing or a friend thing or an actual romance He's thing. He's doing a lot of speculating before he even like sends the first message. Stop speculating. Start masturbating. Mm, that's an interesting, interesting idea. So you masturbate, then you message her, then you're clear of a sexual conscious mind. Oh. You're, you're thinking clearly, lucidly about what you need to say. Good call, brah. Uh, now that textjake.com is closed, can you give this guy a suggestion about an opening message to send to this uh, stripper? Um, her name, exclamation point, which is something I almost always start out text with. That means you're excited and you yeah, remember their and name. And their name makes you excited. So yeah. like, say her name is Kristen. W- would you say her real name or her stripper name? Real. Perfect. Don't use the stripper name again. Uh, Kristen! Exclamation point. Yeah. Um, it's me, Deli. Perfect. Uh, we met last night. I forget where, but it was fun to <laughs> oh, That's good. <laughs> it was that's fun a, getting yeah, to know you. Yeah, it's a good you. joke. Yeah, then yeah. it's like you're winking at the stripper thing, but you're not ashamed of it, and you're not necessarily bringing it up. Yeah, that's like that's off the top of my dome. Yeah. So, you know. There it is. It. For free. There you go. Uh, all well, right. he's going to Venmo for you five bucks. No, I don't know right? if he'll do that. You might. Well, once we start this, uh, the lap dance to go app. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Ooh, lap app. Lap app. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, you should have saved it for two innovations. Shit, me, F, fuck it. Uh, all right. That was, yeah, this is, that's it. What can we say? Go for it. Um, don't, don't, you don't have to psych yourself out before anything happens. Walk into this thing with an open mind. Maybe you'll like her. Uh, it's possible. Yeah. You would date a stripper, I feel like. For sure. Um, cool. That was our two, two-parter within one episode episode, a little before and after. We had fun. I think, I think it worked out well. It was a nice Halloween. Um, the, if you have your own questions or your own theme song submissions, we start and end every episode with original theme song submissions. The opening one was from Nikki Richards. Remember the ukulele lady from, uh, oh, yeah. 
yeah, the Canada. Jason Mraz. Exactly. That was yesterday in our hearts, but Interesting. just 40 minutes ago in our minds. And this ending one is by Mitchell, and it's an Arctic Monkeys parody. If you have your own questions, your own theme song submissions, Facebook thumbnail submissions, all of it goes to if I were you show at gmail.com. If you live in the cities where we're, <clears throat> where we're going to come do our live shows, we'll see you soon. If not, we'll be back on the airwaves uh, next week. How's that sound? Perfect. Toda. Happy Halloween. Happy November. See you guys soon. Adios. That was a HeadGum Podcast.